Good evening, guys. Good evening, good evening. Welcome, everyone. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I had some uh, inconvenience. Tell me, how is everything today? Today is Tuesday. How's everything? How are you? Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Well, pretty good. What's a good day at work? Still at work? No, it was a good day at work today. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. All right, all right. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, finally we can complete a lot of tasks from today. All right. And yeah, we're going, well, you know, tomorrow work, well, tomorrow's from home at night shift, but that, uh, that issue, there was a, a regional issue in a lot of stores, but finally it got fixed. Oh, uh -huh. that's that's good to know. That's good to know. Excellent. Good for you. Yes. So you're saying that today it was very productive. Yeah, that's right. It was very productive. All right. All right. Well, speaking of uh, productive, my day was not productive at all. It's today Why? I, I went to school and uh, students are not going anymore. They are on vacation already. So uh, it's just the teachers over there at the school. So I went to school and I was just sitting on the chair, working on the computer, doing, doing some things on the computer. And I didn't do anything else. It was very oh, well, unproductive. <laughs> very unproductive. <laughs> well, let's see what happens tomorrow. Yes, I got some plans, some tax, tasks to, to complete. Let's see what happens. Yes. Okay. Well, how, how are you? How do you feel right now? Hungry, sleepy, tired? Well, um, a little tired, but I still with energy to to attend the class. All right, all right. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's okay to be tired. It's normal. We are not machines. We we get physically mm. tired, emotionally tired. But there is nothing else but to continue moving on. Yes, we have to move on, keep going. That's right. Yes, exactly, exactly. All right. Hey, Fabricio, how are you, Fabricio? How is everything? How is your car? Good evening, teacher and everyone. Uh, the car is not good. Is uh, The car is undergoing repairs for several days. Oh, really? Oh, man. Yeah. That, is, that is bad news. And what happened? How 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 did it happen? Uh, my brakes didn't hold well. Uh, oh, I, I think because of the rain, and uh -huh. so the car skidded. What what slip? I don't know. If that that is the word skidded. The repo. Oh oh yeah 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 yeah. Let's let's say a slip. A slip slip. It's okay. Slip, some kind of slip, and uh, I forgot the other word. Yes. Got the other word. Think it's drag. Oh, really? Oh, well, because it was it was humid. It was wet. Excuse me. But what well, did you crash? Did you crash a person or or uh, a was a mo motorcycle? Oh wow! But how's the person? How's the motorcycle person? Um, fortunately, the car uh, insurance is uh, I have is very good and it covers right. all damages. Oh, uh, good. Good. Nothing happened to the motorcyclist, uh, other right. than fright, of course. All right, all right. That's that's awesome. That's good news. That's good news. It's too bad that your car is in bad conditions that you have to wait a couple of days, but uh. Well, you're you're all right, and that's that's what we need, right? Yes, you gotta be thankful for yes. that, that that nothing bad Thanks. happened, that you're fine, that you're physically fine, that the person is physically fine. Just the material, uh, you know. But we can replace materials. We cannot replace anything physical, but we can replace material. So I'm glad that you're okay, Fabricio. Yes. Thank you, teacher. I had an accident, a motorcycle accident a couple of years ago. I was three, four, 
no, five, like four or five years ago, uh, I had a motorcycle accident and uh, it was uh, the day before, before uh, starting vacation. The next day I was going to start my vacation and I spent my vacation on, on my bed, sleeping, well, not sleeping, just there because I couldn't walk. And uh, I, I uh, injured, I injured my knee, my, my uh, left knee for around 10 days. I was on my bed just there. Yeah, very, very bad accident. I injured my knee pretty bad, pretty bad. Yes. Yeah. That was like a, some years ago. All right. But thank you for being here, Fabricio. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you for joining what about the rest? How is everything, people? Luis Javier, how are you? Elizabeth, Mauricio, Eric, Mario, Magdiel, Marilyn, how is everything? How's your day going? How's your day ending? So far, so good, teacher. All right. Yeah. How was your day today? Uh, it was... Um, uh, a little busy and uh, right. the job, yeah. A little busy, all right, all right, yeah. Was it productive? Sorry, was it was it was your day productive? Um, yeah, did it, it, it was it? All right, yeah. all right, that's good, that's good, excellent, my dear. Very good, very good. You feel tired, hungry, sleepy? Um, oh, you I... I'm not tired. <laughs> You're not tired, really? Yes, uh, because uh, I had to drive two hours in the traffic. Los Chorros. All right. Two yeah. hours, you said? Two hours. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I have heard a lot of comments about this this road, uh, the Los Chorros Street, that is always very, very... uh crowded, many cars, too much traffic. Is it always like that, Magdiel? Every day? Yeah, it's every day. Wow. Every day. It, it's, it's something that there are a, a uh, few aren't cars. There any, uh, aren't there any shortcuts that you can take? Any shortcuts? What does it mean that? A shortcut. A shortcut is uh, another alternative or option that you can take. I mean, speaking of streets, I'm talking about uh, a street. Uh, okay. A shortcut, like uh, another another street that shortcut, you can take. Yeah. Yes, I got it. In my case, I I, I can take um, another route uh, hmm? around the Komasawa Street mm -hmm. yes. to get the or over mountain to Hayake City, but it, <clears throat> it's uh, 10, 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers plus. Too much. <laughs> That's too 10 much. Or, or 15 kilometers kilometer plus. Yes, you, have to, you, you have to spend more gasoline. Yeah. yeah, I had yeah. to spend more gasoline. Wow. Let me tell you a story that happened to me three, well, two or three weeks ago. Uh, to get to my house, there is only, well, there are only two ways. A long way and a short way. I always take the short way because, you know, it's, it's easier and faster to get to my house. And it was closed one day. Well, actually, it happened two days. But the first day it was closed. They told me that I couldn't get through because they were fixing the streets. They were they were uh, repairing the streets, and uh, I couldn't go through. And they told me to go around a place. It was very far, so I went around that place, and uh, the street over there in that place was also blocked because the there was a bridge, and the and the bridge fell fell down because of the rain. There was some. Uh, a rain problem over there, a storm brought down the, 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 the bridge. So the bridge was in very bad conditions. 
So the, the, the street over there was blocked. And I asked the person that was uh, in the area about a different shortcut. And this person told me to go around a hill, some kind of hill over there by a canton. And uh, it was like some kind of forest. So I was driving to this place, right? And I went around this place. It took me like one hour. I mean, from my job, which is very far from my house, it just takes me 50 minutes from my job to my house by car, by car, very fast. And this time from uh, almost near my house from here, it took me like one hour to go around this, this hill. I almost got lost. There were no people. There were no houses. It was just a hill with a lot of uh, trees, a lot of grass. It was very a very bad street. You know, I was kind of scared, you know, <laughs> but I had to go to my get to my house, and uh, it was it was a a good experience. It was a good experience, but I I got I almost got lost. Almost got lost. That was like three weeks ago. Yes, two or three weeks ago. Not really sure. Yes, but I made it to my house. I was scared, you know. Luckily, there are no more. There, there's no more danger, you know, bad people anymore. So I was driving, you know, normally. I was not worried because, you know, those people don't don't are not outside anymore. And I was, yeah, <laughs> but I was kind of scared because no houses, no people, nothing. Just the street, a lot of trees, uh, some kind of forest and bosque. Like it was a hill in the montaña, right? It was very very scary. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny, but scary. Was... All right. The, the last week, the was dangerous because of the rain in Los Chorros. Really? What happened? An accident? No, no, but uh, because of the rain, the... the it um could be uh como se dice deslizamientos podrían haber deslizamientos landslide landslide yes, let me write it down there are race race of landslide yes because landslide. of the, a lot of rain yes yeah. i understand i understand yes. yeah it's it's sometimes it's dangerous Especially those streets that are surrounded by by uh, hills or or uh, I don't know yeah hills pretty much hills yes it's dangerous because you know like rocks can fall on the streets you know or or there can be landslides and uh, it's dangerous yes you gotta be careful with that why I yes how is everybody else. Eric, how are you, Eric? Welcome. How is everything today? So far, so good, coach. So far, so good. How was your day? Good, bad, more or less? You can't complain? Mm, more or less, because I was busy. And really? I was I was dealing with a supplier or... I don't know is called this 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 word uh, providers, providers or well you can say pro providers or suppliers, but yeah. it's better it's better to say suppliers, suppliers yes, and uh, I had to deal with them and sometimes they they don't understand the the that I need in my in my job that I ask I ask them something and they make uh, other things and oh. it was it was tired and all right, all right. Uh, but I I I go ahead always yes you have to you have to there's no other option there's no choice <laughs> you gotta yes. move on. You gotta move on. 
Because how do you feel right now? Tired, sleepy, good, hungry? And now I'm ready. Uh, I'm already ha have my dinner and and now I only I'm listening the class. All right, man. Yes. Okay. I am I am in my hamaca. Hammer. Listening. Hammer, yes. <laughs> Relaxing. Relaxing, exactly. Right, right, right. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's good. Good to know, Eric. Excellent. I'm glad that you are resting, that you're relaxing. Okay. That's really good. All right. Of course. Yes. But Marilyn told me that she's just listening because she's feeling bad. I'm sorry, Marilyn, that you're feeling bad right now. Yeah. Uh, I was giving a strong painkiller for the pain in my knee. What do you have in your knee? What's wrong? Send me a, a message there. All right. Luis Javier, how are you, Luis? How is everything? Don't know he's there. Takia is is not available right now, I know. Mauricio, what about you? How is everything, Mauricio? Is not there, and Elizabeth, are you going to be a listener, Elizabeth? Oh, I'm she... sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was work... I was talking in mute. <laughs> All right, that's okay. That's yes, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> fine, okay. Fine. Uh, I described all day in mute. Really? No, no. <laughs> okay, but uh, well, today is my day off, but uh, I was busy. Because I, I I went to the bank to resolve some issues with my app, but Bank Auricola didn't resolve my problems and just tell me, and I'm going to give you 24 hours to 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 resolve the app problems, but I didn't have enough time to do that because I need to use the money very quickly, and only that after that I I tried to eat with my family and just had the opportunity, have the opportunity in my day off. And I ate some chilaquilas, uh, with, yes, with, um, with cheese. Um, after that, I tried to resolve uh, uh, the test about the, the, the course. Mm -hmm. And I got some issues with that. Um, I'm going to explain about it. And oh. yes, um, I'm, and I watched some series, um, Netflix, but uh, no, and Star Plus, the American Horror Story. But I didn't like the news, the new, season. the new season. Yes, I, I, I don't, I didn't enjoy that. It's about the, the Satan and all, and a lot of thing about it, like uh, wishes and, and yeah. I didn't like it. Okay, I, I enjoyed that. Um, it, in a level like a fight, but when when the all series is about Satan, I don't like. So I try to to watch another thing in English to practice my listening. Yes, only oh, that. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Yeah, but that series, American Horror uh, History, I think it is, has like twelve or thirteen seasons or fourteen seasons. Wow, too many seasons. Too many, too much, yes, too but uh, the 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 first and two and three season, uh, were good. But after like seven, eight, and another one, uh, just about Satan. And no, what happened with that man? No. Oh, I understand. I understand. All uh, right. Well, I'm I'm good that you're here. Glad that you're here. I have torn ligaments. Wow. Which ligament, though? I have a torn ligament, too, on my left knee. I was uh, playing soccer two years ago, and uh, somebody pushed me from behind. And uh, I don't know, but my, my knee landed, like, in a very bad uh, very bad position. So it, it torn my, 
it tore my my ligament. Yes. But in my case, I, I, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. But I cannot do any physical activities like play soccer or run or ride a bicycle. I cannot do any of that. Because if I do it, I lose balance. Yes. It's difficult. Yeah. I'm sorry, Marilyn, that you're going through this. Yes. When you hurt, when you hurt your knee, because when, when I hurt my knee, it hurts. But when it heals, when it heals, it doesn't hurt. But I cannot do any physical activities. Yes. Nothing. I cannot even run. If I want to run from a dog, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yes. Sad. It's bad. All right. Well, we got how many are we? 11 right now. Okay. Thank you guys for joining. Let me take attendance. We've been talking about you. Excellent. Thank you for telling me about your day. Uh, well, Carla, I don't know if she's available for participation. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't know. And uh, Mario, he, he, I don't know. And Mario just told me that cannot, she cannot speak. All right. Let me take attendance, people. Thank you for joining again. It's good to see you. Uh, Diego Jose, Josue Benitez Leiva. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez Ramirez. Good evening, present. Thank you, thank you. Emerson Alexander Lopez Lopez. Present, teacher. Yes, thank you, thank you. Eric Enrique, Enrique Reyes Martinez. Here in the house. In the house, excellent. Julissa Emilia Villalta, Villalta. Nahir. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. All right. Katia Maria Gonzalez Alvarenga. Hi, teacher. Present. Thank Present, you, thank teacher. You. Sorry. All right. Yes, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Luis Mauricio Tobar Ramos. Uh, Luis Javier Castillo. Sorry, present teacher. Yes, thank you. Luis Javier Castillo. Magdiel Esaú García Morales. Present. Manuel Alexander, thank you, Magdiel. Manuel Alexander Vázquez. Ra... Oh, this person, no. <laughs> Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Let me see. Mario Ernesto Ramirez López. And present teacher. Thank you, thank you. Mauricio Edgardo Soriano Ramirez. I'm here. Thank you. Raul Edgardo Rafael is not here. Raul Edgardo Muñoz del Cid. I'm a little sick. I have quite a cup. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Mario. Yeah. Uh, three three days ago, I don't know, I was doing some here, some cleaning, and the dust affected my, my, my health, and I got this uh, cold, a, a cough, cold, and uh, I've been doing bad since then. Yes. But I took some, some medicine, and uh, I'm, I've been feeling a lot better now. All right. People, uh, there is a lot to do. I just want to check how many of you finished the platform by today or by now. Let me check right now to see how your progress is. And if you haven't completed the first section or unit number one, I'm going to tell you to work on it today, please. And finish it today. Yes. For example, I got Edgardo, no, nothing. You have nothing, Edgardo. You got to work on it today, please. Elizabeth, Eric, Eric. Uh, let me see. Julissa, Carla, Katia as well. Please, Fabricio, you got to uh, raise it. It's, it's uh, 56 right now. It has to be at least 80. Please, Javier, Magdiel is 100%. Thank you, Magdiel. And Marilyn, you got 80%. Well, Mario Ernesto, 80%. I mean, it's okay. It's the minimum. Mauricio Edgardo, oh. Um, okay, Edgardo, you got two accounts. 
Okay. Only Sorry. Only fine then. Ninety-two. Uh, uh, yes. Is that okay for me? Because I I I I resolved the the test uh, to date. I had twenty-three points. Is that okay? Who who what, what? Come again, please. I don't know, Mauricio. I don't know if you shared the the screen, but I I can see that. Yeah, yeah. It's just not ninety-two percent. Ah, uh, ninety-two. But I uh okay. I had that problem because I checked the progress. It just was the uh just say so around twenty-three. Twenty-three. No, let me let me show this to you. Look at it. Take a look. I don't know, but somehow I have I have uh. Edgardo over here. I don't know if it is you or another Edgardo. But this Edgardo has a zero, zero, nothing. Ah, okay. But no, you, no my you, name is Mauricio Edgardo. Exactly, exactly. Yes. But you, Mauricio Edgardo Soriano, 92%. You're fine. Yes. Uh, what about, what about the, the what about the other the other point? Uh after three lines? 23. Oh, this one. Yes. Oh, no, this one is the average. The average. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks. It's like the 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 total of this one, this one, this one, and four. One, two, three, and four is the total. Yes. Okay. Yeah, look, one hundred percent over here with your with your Jose. One hundred percent. Twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five and twenty five. One hundred. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Right. So, guys, please, please work on the platform today. Uh, like I said, Elizabeth and uh, Eric, Julissa, Carla, Katia, Luis, Fabricio, both Luis, Luis Javier as well. Yes, you have to increase the the the, the grade. All right. Yes. Teacher. Yes. Tell me. I have done all the homeworks, but I have troubles in the homework. Let me see. Which one? One dot five, I think. What we can do, Fabricio, you can stay uh after class and I can help you out with the with the activity. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank I you. I can help you out. Problem. Yes. All right. Let's begin. Uh, today we are going to work on some very important. Yes, today we are going to finish uh unit number one. I mean uh, e-commerce. Today we finish it. Yes, a couple of days ago, I think it was on Wednesday or Friday last week, we studied the uh, reported speech, reported speech. Something I forgot to tell you about reported speech is that it says here, where is it? Let me see. Yes. Let me see where that where that is. Somewhere over here. All right. For example, when I say a YouTuber says manufacturers' websites have important information about products online. I can say uh, YouTubers said that manufacturers' websites had an important information about products online. Yes, but I was I was uh, extending extending my knowledge, and I was reading some uh, sources. I'm not sure if these sources are legit, but they were saying that sometimes we can we can also report in the present. Like, for example, a person says something in the present or using simple present, and you can uh, report that also in the simple present. Yes. Yes. That, that was, that, that, that's what I read. That's what I read. Yes. That's what I read. Yes. It might be true, might not be true. Yes. Yeah, might, might be legit, might be not legit. No. Yes. So today, today we're going to continue talking about report speech, but it's not going to be about a bit about affirmative statements. I mean, it's going to be about it, it's gonna be similar and uh maybe not easier but complex 
a little complex because there, there are a few things that we need to cover from that. But before we go on to this topic, I mean, report speech, I would like to show you some about, about this word. Let me go uh, and swear. And uh, let me put it here. Not in Spanish, not in Spanish. All right, look. I don't know if you guys know this word. What? Do you know this word? Have you ever seen it before? Have you seen it before? Yes, teacher. All right, all right. Good, good. All right. We got the word and uh, the definition of the word is right here. A person who organizes and manages an enterprise. All right. Especially a business, usually with considerable bearing, skill, and financial risk. Right? Yes. Also, we yeah, have oh, the same. An employer of productive labor contra uh, contractor. This is a buy, but what's difficult about this word is the pronunciation. Look at how it goes. Oops, not this one. This is the U UK. Can I find it differently? UK, UK, no. Ah, there you go. Look, enter, entrepreneur. In the US, in the US, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Listen to that. Entrepreneur. We we got different accents. We got different accents. It says ant over here, but you can say ant also. No problem. All right. Entrepreneur. All right. Listen to that. Let me repeat it. Entrepreneur. Again. Can you hear it? Yes. All right. Entrepreneur. You gotta hear entrepreneur or entrepreneur. All right. It's it's kind of difficult to pronounce. Yes. What does this mean in Spanish? Do you know? Of synonyms. Let's look for synonyms. Look at the synonyms. Business person, business woman, businessman, business leader, tycoon, captain of industry, magnate, developer, organizer, organizer. Strategist, director, manager, contractor, enterpriser, industrialist, small business owner, and self starter. Those are some synonyms for the word entrepreneur. All right? Yes. Now, let's get into this. All right, uh, this is class class number six or day number six. It's Tuesday. And uh, well, uh, let's quickly review a little bit about e-commerce, but look at what it says up there. How is e-commerce useful to entrepreneurs? So can anyone read? Can anyone read the definition over here? Me, teacher. All right, thank you for, for offering. Go ahead, read it. How is e-commerce useful to entrepreneurs? E-commerce is an incredible, powerful tool for small businesses. Understanding how commerce is useful to entrepreneurs can persuade, persuade uh, even, the most, even the most, even the most wary, wary. I don't know that word, yes. wary, for small business owners to open a e-commerce store. Okay, okay, very good. Let me read it. Oh, what what does we are mean? Do you know, guys, what it means? No. No. In go to the chat. Uh, sorry, cautious. 
That's what it is. That's what it is. Gosh, that's a synonym of the word. Yes. Yes, that's the word. All right. Do you understand it now? Weary? Like, let me help you out. Uh, uh. Yes. Uh, there you go. Right there. All right. E-commerce is an incredibly powerful tool for small businesses. Understanding how e-commerce is useful to entrepreneurs can persuade even the most wary of small business owners to open an e-commerce store. All right. Very good. Yes. Let's see. Let's continue. Then we have a definition for e-commerce. Okay, we already know what e-commerce is, but it's necessary to remember or to remind ourselves about this. It says, what is e-commerce? Guys, can you please help me out with the, with the reading? Yes, teacher, I can. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead. E-commerce is the selling of goods of or services online, sorry. Many people assume that e-commerce only refers to selling traditional retail products like clothing or home goods. But e-commerce encompasses a wide range of products and services, from used clothes, clothes to subscriptions for coaching services. Okay, thank you for reading, Diego, and welcome. I didn't see you. I hadn't seen you before. All right. Hello, teacher. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. E-commerce is the selling of goods and services online. Many people assume that e-commerce only refers to selling, tradi to selling traditional retail products like clothing or home goods. But e-commerce encompasses a wide range of products and services from used clothes to subscriptions for coaching services. So, Again, e-commerce is all about selling and well, buying and selling anything through the internet. Clothes, items, products, services, pretty much anything that you can pay, anything you can sell. That's e-commerce. Of course, online, all right? Online. Very good. Now, uh, we're gonna read, we're gonna read some tips some actually some benefits of e-commerce to entrepreneurs and the small businesses yes all right before we go and uh, share the benefits i would like to get some benefits from you guys what can you say what are or what can be some benefits of e-commerce to entrepreneurs now nowadays in 2023 Tell me. The facility to, 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 well, to buy things to create a, to create a tiny store for our small business. Hello, yes, yes, I'm hearing. I'm here listening to you. Yeah, the, the benefits of e-commerce to entrepreneurs and small businesses, well, nowadays, there the the lot of website, free websites and networks, um, social media, social networks to <clears throat> to show the products from the small businesses. All right. Anyone else? I think it's true that for the small businesses, um, you, for example, you can pay for publicity in the social you media, watch, and you can, uh, you can, watch, you can pay, you can pay for publicity. Oh yes, yes. In a social media, and you can get um, alcance. How do you say alcance? A what? Sorry. Alcance. You can reach. Yeah, you can reach 
you can get rich, right? No, no, you can, and, you can reach. You can reach. Okay, you can reach. And uh, people that is uh, in other countries, for example, can um, know you or people that is um, near you, for example, whatever. All right, all right. Anyone else? Benefits of e-commerce to entrepreneurs and the small businesses? Teacher, I think that one of the benefits uh, is that you don't have to pay rent for a physical location, right, right, right. physical store. And if you're starting your own business, uh, that's an advantage. Right, right. Excellent. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes. You don't have to pay for a physical place. Yes. All right. What else can you say? What else can you say? Guys, what else can you say? Hello, anyone? Anyone, anyone? The facility to get customers? The facility to get customers. How come? Yes. Yes, without a physical place. All right. What else? What else can you say, guys? What else can you say? Nothing. All right. Let me show you. Let me show you a couple of tips. A couple of tips or benefits of e-commerce to entrepreneurs. Let's see. The first one. Uh, we might find a lot of vocabulary here. So please, people, let me know of words that you don't know, expressions that you don't understand to help you out. All right. With the with the definition. Uh, let me read it to you. Then we check the vocabulary and I ask one person to read and we move on, on to the next one. Lower upfront costs. With no building to rent, what you were saying, with no building to rent or store displays to stock, entrepreneurs can start an e-commerce business for much less than uh, traditional brick and mortar businesses. Remember, Brick and mortar businesses are traditional stores. Other than securing a website and the right e-commerce business license, the startup costs are minimal. Costs are minimal. If you're selling services and or decide to sell products using a drop shipping partner, you don't even have to purchase inventory to start your your business, right? So let's see. Vocabulary. Do you have any questions about the words? Drop shipping. Drop shipping. Okay. Uh, drop shipping. We got. I told you that brick and mortar and mortar businesses are those stores that we already know. All right. I saw that you go to and uh, that you visit uh from time to time or traditional stores. All right. Oh, okay. That's what what. Yes. No, I get, it. I get it. I was, I was, I were to asking that that word brick and mortar, but okay, I get it. Yes, yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. All right. So brick, but if you separate the words, if you separate them, you're gonna have a different definition. So what I'm telling you is, if you use the word, you have to use it with the hyphens. You know what hyphen is? Hyphen. Uh, can you spell it? Hyphen. Uh, no, not really. Let me see. That's Hi. the line in the middle? Exactly, exactly. In the chat. Hyphen. This is what, what oh. he said. Yes. What he said, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, what else you say? What else? Oh, drop shipping, you said? Yes, teacher. Drop shipping is not really, is not really a word. 
it's more like a term. It's more like a term. Yes, let me show you what it is. It's a uh, some kind of oops over here. Let's see, uh, drop oops, drop shipping. What in Spanish? What is in Spanish? In English. <laughs> Why you just show me in the Spanish the Spanish things? I don't want to know about that. All right. What is drop shipping and how does it work? My internet is slow. All right. Look, it's the way of selling products online without needing to keep them in stock. That's what it is. When an order is received, the seller sends, sends it to another company who ships the product straight to the consumer. Customer, sorry. So it's pretty much this. You have a, a dropshipping partner. You have your own business, right? Your own business. And you have a dropshipping partner. It means that you send your products to this part, to this, to this uh, dropshipping partner. And this person is the one that, that gives or sends the product to your to your consumer or to your customer. That's what it is. Teacher, it's like it's like Peoya, for example. Uh -huh, like like that like that and Google right those those two companies they they work like that yes exactly yes yes exactly look when an order is received the seller you sends it to another company or another person who ships the product straight to the customer right that's what drop shipping is so it says here drop shipping partner. Yes, if you're selling services or decide to sell products using a drop shipping partner, you don't even have to purchase inventory to start your business. So that's what it is. A drop it drop shipping partner is a person that helps helps you with the with the delivery. So the word drop shipping does not have a definition in Spanish. Yes, it's just a a term in English or a term for for um. Uh, for uh, for these things, for selling online, yes. All right, a person to read, to help me read this. Low, lower upfront costs. Me teacher. teacher, sorry, I don't know upfront, what it is. Upfront, up, upfront. Yes, this word, this word is, uh, how can I tell you this? Uh, like ahead. That's a synonym. Ahead. You don't have to pay uh, things ahead. Like something like that. Yes. Ahead. Like uh, beforehand. That can be a synonym. Up front. Let me see. Up front. Beforehand. Or like in advance. Something like that. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Something like that. Although... It has some some definitions. This word up front has some definitions. Yes, yes, but it's it's more like prefer about about uh before. Okay. Yes, it's like anticipado in Spanish. It's like beforehand or in advance. What you you were saying? Yes. Por adelantado. That's the word. Por adelantado, correct? Yeah, basically, yes. basically that's what it is. All right, let's see. Who wants to read again? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see the person. Me, teacher. All right, Emerson, go ahead, read. <clears throat> okay. Um, lower upfront cost. With no building to rent or store this place to stock, entrepreneurs can start an e-commerce business for much less than traditional brick and mortar businesses. Other than securing a website, and the right e-commerce business license. The startup costs are minimal. If you're selling services or decide to sell products using a dropshipping partner, you don't even have to purchase inventory to start your business. All right, all right, there you go, there you go. So don't, we don't have uh, upfront costs or, or things to pay beforehand, right? Or in advance, 
The second one works with multiple types of products and services. Let me read it. E-commerce supports various business models. For example, a brick and mortar store might add e-commerce as they develop their uh, their omni-channel uh, e-commerce sales strategy. But more realistically, for an entrepreneur, e-commerce can be a main and supplemental supplemental uh, source of revenue. For example, a consultant of, or coach might add e-commerce to sell books or other merchandise. They also could use the e-commerce platform to sell coaching packages. All right. So it works with multiple types of products and services. Yes. All right. All right. Now, let's check out the vocabulary over here before we read again. Yes. Are there any words? Omnichannel. Sorry? Omnichannel, teacher. I don't know what it is. This one, this one is also is also a, a a term, a term that we can look up right now. I don't really really match it that much. Actually, it's omni omni sport. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. There you go. We got it. Why is this in Spanish? Oh, we got it here. See, it's an e-commerce term. Yes, it doesn't have a word or a definition in Spanish. Yes. Look, it's an e-commerce, oops, it's an e-commerce sales approach that uses multiple channels and gives customers and unified experience across all the channels, whether it's from uh, in stock kiosks or other digital digital channels. It's like it's like social media right now. We got uh, we can say that social media is like omnichannel. I mean, we have different uh, places to get to get the services. If you go to Facebook, you can find the same ad on Instagram or Twitter or even on TikTok or uh, or on WhatsApp. You can find it. So that's uh that's that is omnichannel, right? That's what it is. Uh, let me see what. Oh, also on YouTube you can find. Well, actually, if you go to YouTube, you're gonna find you're gonna find uh this tool very 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 often. Yes, with the ads and everything, it's very very normal to see that. So that's what it is, right? It's an approach that uses multiple channels, or they are use different channels to find the same products. Yes. Right? That's what it is. Let's go back. Very good. So that is omni-channel e-commerce. Yes. What else? More questions? Now we're good. Yes, teacher. What is revenue? Do you know what revenue is? Revenue? Any ideas? Yeah, like incomes. Yes, yes. All right. Who wants to read? Who wants to read this one? Me, teacher. All right, Miguel, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Works with multiple types of products and services. E-commerce supports various, various business models. For example, a brick and model store might add e-commerce as they develop their omnichannel 
e-commerce sales strategy, but more realistic, realistically, for an entrepreneur, e-commerce can be a mine or supplemental source of revenue. For example, a consultant or coach might add e-commerce to sell books or their or other merchandise. They also could use an e-commerce plat platform to sell coaching packages. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for reading my deal. So number one is that we don't have to pay extra things beforehand or in advance. The second thing is that we have we have the option, the choice to to work with many things, many products. Or many services. That's why it's called Omni. Omni, you know, it's everywhere. What? Okay. There's one missing. Number three is missing. <laughs> ah, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it says there e-commerce is growing. Excuse me. E-commerce isn't new. People were already shopping online before the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic and the resulting extra time people spent at home only increased e-commerce sales. Your customers are shopping online. If a small business wants to be successful, it needs to be selling online to meet customers' expectations. All right? This one, we, I think we don't, we don't have a complicated vocabulary. So as we know, as we know, the the shopping and selling online was already uh, mm -hmm. around before the pandemic, so it's not really new, right? But it's 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 growing, it's growing. Yes, the demand is increasing. There are many many people, many entrepreneurs that are starting their own businesses online. All right, let's see a person to read. A person to read. Thank you. May I try, teacher? Yes, Marisa, of course. Thank you. E-commerce is growing. E-commerce isn't new. People were already shopping online before the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic and the resulting extra time people spent at home only increased e-commerce sales. Your customer and shopping on uh, your customers and shopping on online. Your customers and shopping online, sorry. If a small business wants to be successful, it needs to be selling online to meet customers' expectations. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. So, thank you. Thank you. That's number four. And look at what he says over here. If a small business, a small business, not an online business, if a small business wants to be successful and needs to be selling online or start also their, their e-commerce platform to meet their customers' expectations. Uh, e-commerce is a 24-7 sales, sales channel. With e-commerce, an entrepreneur can make money while they sleep. They sleep. An e-commerce business operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But that doesn't mean the business owner is working that much. You need you need staff to greet your greet customers and ring up sales every hour. Every hour your store is open with a traditional business. With e-commerce, your website welcomes customers and process, processes transactions. You just need to spend a couple of hours preparing orders and updating the website. And updating the website. So e-commerce is a 24-7 thing. It's not like just a couple of hours or, or half a day. It's 24-7. Yes. All right. Now, uh, is there or are there any words that you guys do not understand? Let me know. Yes. Let me know. No.
Sorry, teacher, I lose my uh, internet connection. Can you repeat? The what? Um, the last thing that you say? No, I said I said you have if you have questions about the vocabulary. I think you don't. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Do you sorry, have sorry. Oh, okay. Do you have any book? Well, is there anybody that would like to read? Yes, me. All right, Mauricio, excellent. Thank you. E commerce e is a 21st, 20, 27 sales channel. With e commerce, an entrepreneur can we make money while they sleep? And e commerce, an e commerce business operate, operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But that doesn't mean the business owner is working that much. You need staff to grade customers and green up sales every hours. Every hours your store is open with a with a traditional business. With e-commerce, your website welcomes to customers and proceeds processes processes transactions. Processes. Processes, transactions. You just need to spend a couple of hours repeating orders and updating the website. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's continue. Thank you for uh, reading Mauricio. So e-commerce is a 24-7 business. Six, work from home or anywhere. Another benefit. You can work from your house or you can be in a store, in a cafe, in a restaurant, anywhere, and you can be making money. Another advantage of e-commerce for entrepreneurs is the ability to work wherever you would like, or you uh, they like, sorry. Many small business owners don't have the budget to rent office or retail space. With e-commerce, you can launch your business from your garage, basement, or spare, uh, spare bedroom, anywhere, right? Yes, you don't have to complicate yourself. All right, this one is easy to understand. Uh, it's basically you can stay in your house and you can use your computer or your cell phone or tablet. Yes, and you can be working from, from your house. Or you can be in a different place at your neighbor's house, at your parents' house, on the street, at the bus station, on the bus, in a taxi, anywhere you're at, you can be selling your, your, your things, right? A volunteer to read. Me, teacher. All right. Thank you, thank you. Very good. Work from home or anywhere. Another advantage of e-commerce for entrepreneurs that is the ability to work wherever they like. Many small business owners don't have the budget to run office or retail space. With e-commerce, you can launch your business from your garage, basement, or a space, or a spare bedroom. Spare bedroom. Thank you very much for reading. Thank you. Thank you. Now, allows for concept testing. Number seven. Yes. E-commerce sites provide a wealth of e-commerce analytics to guide entrepreneurs in making business decisions. Small business owners can see which products and marketing campaigns resonate best with their customer base by analyzing web traffic and sale, sales trends. All right, yes. That's e-commerce all about, it can help you out see what people are looking for and uh, see what people are or what is trending with everybody. Yes. All right. A person to read this one. We're almost done. We're almost done with this. I can, teacher. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Allows for constant testing. E-commerce sites provide a wealth of e-commerce analytics to guide entrepreneurs in making business decisions. Small businesses 
sorry, small business owners can see which products and marketing campaigns resonate best with their customers base by analyzing web traffic and sales trends. All right. Thank you, Diego, for reading. And the last one. Easily scales. The low startup cost and flexible schedule make e-commerce what? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Again, the low startup costs and flexible schedule make e-commerce one of the most scalable business models. You could start an e-commerce business as a side hustle without quitting your day job as the business grows. You can consider hiring more people and adding additional products. Yes. Now, very good. What's a side hustle? Hustle. You can say hustle or hustle, right? Yes. Do you have any ideas? If you if you see the word or uh, look for the word hustle, it has a very weird definition. It's not really a cool definition. Yes. That's a oh, kind like of, problems. Something like that. Something like that. But. But a side hustle is some different. Yes. Wait. Yes, what? the word is uh, uh Yes, tell me, tell me. No, I used to use those words when the customer talk about the terms or 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 the terms to cancel in can, cancellation after two or, or one year. And uh, I mentioned okay, you will not get any hassle if you want to do something. In, in two months, for example. Yes. Yes. yes the, the 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 gringos likes to 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 watch or hear that. Like yes, exactly. Get, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that that means that they 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 will not have any problems to do the changes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. If you're interested in making extra money outside of your full time job or want to explore new, a new career. Consider starting a high aside a uh, hustle. To pursue one successfully, it helps to choose the uh, message interest. Well, I don't have a definition right there. I can see. Ah, uh, it's here. A side hustle is an additional employment opportunity outside of a person's full full time job that provides supplemental income. That's what it is. A high side hustle. It's an additional employment opportunity. It's like an extra job, but it's not really, uh, well, it's not, uh, how can I tell you this? It's not technically, technically a job, you know, because a job is when you go to a place or you sign a contract and you're working for a company or for a person. But in these cases, it's like you're not signing anything. You're doing it for yourself and by yourself. So that's a high side of them. Yes. Of a person's full-time job that provides supplemental income. Yes. Look, uh, unlike a part-time job, a side hustle commonly has more freedom and more control over what a person does. Yes. Right. Very good. I was telling you the the hold on. We're back here. Okay, hold on, give me a second. I opened something here that I was not supposed to open. All right, yes. Uh, who can help me read the last one? Okay, uh, easily scales. The low startup costs in flexible schedule make e-commerce one of the most scalable business model you could start an e-commerce business as as a side hustle without getting your day job as the business grows grows you can consider hiring more people or adding additional products all right okay very good very good thank you thank you for for your participation. And now, 
the benefits that we have. There are eight, but we only have seven because I skipped one. Uh, lower upfront costs. You don't have to pay rent or a building to, to have your, your place, your business. You can have anything online, products or services. You can find or have anything. E-commerce is, is, is growing, it's is you know expanding everywhere. Yes, you can find it everywhere. E-commerce is 24-7. Uh, you can work from your house or anywhere you're at. It allows allows you to know what's going on, what is trending, what people are liking, what people are loving, etc. And it easily scales, right? Yes. Very good. Now, let's get to the grammar thing. How to use report speech imperatives. How to use report speech imperatives. Now I ask, what is an imperative? Do you guys know what, what this is? What an imperative is? Do you have any I ideas? Don't I don't remember. You don't remember? No, okay, it's okay. Don't worry, don't worry. Look at the example in the box and then complete the exercises below. A sentence expressing a command. That is an imperative. A sentence, I don't know why they say sentence, it's not a sentence. Expressing a command, request, advice, or suggestion is called an imperative sentence. Well, imperative sentence, yes. Example, you should learn from your competitors, but never copy. This never copy or uh, never copy is the imperative. Hold on. Never copy. That's the imperative. What is this? It's a suggestion. Right? It's a suggestion. Jack Ma recommends to learn from our competitors, but to never copy. Oh, that's the reported sentence. That's the reported sentence. Jack Ma recommends to learn from our competitors, but not to but uh but not but to never copy. Now, some specific verbs are required to change an imperative sentence into report speech. For example, requested, ordered, advised, suggested. Instead of the of the reporting verbs said and told. So when you are reporting an imperative, you're not going to use said and told. Because we normally use say, the verb say in the verb tell in the past form, said and told, right? But that is for uh normal, normal, let's say normal imperatives. I mean uh normal report speech. But when I'm talking about imperatives, it kind of changes. We do not use said and we do not use told. We use requested, ordered, advised, and suggested. Look at the example down here. Never give up. That is a command. Never give up. Entrepreneurs recommend to never give up. Yes. yes. You can say this in the present and you can say this in the past. No problem. Yes. Yes. All right. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma said, is act with passion. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma suggests, is to act with, with, uh, with passion. Look up here, said. Look down here, re suggests. So we change it. We don't use we don't use the verb say or the verb told. Tell in these cases, right? We use uh, request, order, advice, and suggest. Let's continue. Report speech imperatives. Report speech in imperatives uh, differ in structure to other report speech sentences. Imperatives are commands. Okay. Requests, advice, and suggestions or recommendations. 
command, for example, keep quiet. You command, this keep quiet command is normally used at schools. You command your students, keep quiet, right? Or do silence, yes. Requests is when you're probably working or doing something and you ask a favor from a person to, to do something for you. That's a request. Hey, please close the window, right? You're asking a person for a favor. Advice, okay, advice is a good idea or a bad idea, depending, but mostly it's a good idea. Go and lie down, lie down is like rest. Yes. Suggestions, take the test next year instead, not this year because you're not ready, all right? So that is an imperative. Let's continue. Here are some further examples using the imperative sentences above, showing them in direct speech and an indirect speech. Now, let me help you out with this. Direct speech. She said, keep quiet. Now, what are we going to do? We are not going to change the verb. The verb is keep. This is the verb, keep. But we're not going to change the verb to the past form. We're going to keep the verb like that, right? In the base form. Or it's going to turn into an infinitive. For example, since it is a teacher, you can say commanded, or in this case, is instructed. She instructed me to. Keep quiet. So look, we're using we're using two over here. Yes, we use the word the the verb the verb uh, suggest, advise, order, instructed, ask. Well, asked in this in this case, told we can use it, advised. And then we use a person. We use a person. In this case, we're using me. Me. In this case, we're using her. And then we use a person. The person that we are advising, instructing, uh, commanding, suggesting. Uh, but look, she instructed me to keep quiet. This is how we report. This is how we report. What changes? What is the difference? There is only one single difference. The difference is the uh, reporting, reporting verb. The reporting verb. The reporting verb goes or is in the past form. Let's go, let's br bring this back. Look, if you say, if you take a look, if you take a look, Reporting verbs said and told. These are the reporter verbs. But we can include more. Some of them are requested, ordered, advised, suggested. We have more. Yes, we have more. We have a couple of more that we can include with no problems. Let's continue. Please close the window, the teacher said. The teacher asked me to close the window. The teacher asked me to close the window. So we're just changing, we're just changing the reporting, the reporting verb in the past form. Asked. And then me or you or her or him or us or them. Or the teacher asked Pablo, Ariana, etc. to close the window. So we use the preposition to, then the verb, and the rest, the complement of the verb. He told her, go lie down. He told her to go lie down. Go and lie down. She said, take the, the, the test next year instead. She advised them to take the test next year instead. Let's take a look at some reporting verbs. 
look in normal, in normal reporting speech, the common reporting verbs are said and told. For instance, she said she was tired. He told me I should come tomorrow. There are many more, however, that are used with reported speech imperatives. Some are for order, while others are for polite requests. Polite requests. Advice, urge, ask, remind, I mean ask, remind, request, beg, suggest, order, tell, order, instruct, command, forbid, demand, and insist. Do you have any questions about these verbs? <laughs> any questions about these verbs? No, teacher. No? Okay. Very good. Very good. Notice this, suggest, demand, and insist they have an asterisk before. This means that these three verbs, or these three reporting verbs, they have a different grammar structure. I mean, we have used them over here to keep quiet, to close the window, to go and lie down, and to take the rest of the year instead. Yes? But with these verbs, suggest, demand, and insist, it's a little different. I will show you later on. More examples now that we're using, using these ones. Yes. My mother, uh, sorry, polite requests. My mother advised me to rest more. The government urged the people, the people, to spend water thoughtfully. She asked me to join her in the seminar. They reminded us to turn in the papers. She request, I mean, he, he requested the, the guests to vacate their, their rooms. He begs her to stay. Bank business past four, right? Orders. John told his brother to change direction. My boss orders me to work harder. She instructed them to learn the alphabet. The general commanded his soldiers to obey. And the sign, excuse me, the sign forbade them to enter. Yes, those are some examples. So, if you see, we are using the infinitive and then we are mentioning the the, the the imperative, to rest more, to spend water thoughtfully, to join her in the seminar, to turn in the papers, to vacate the rooms, to stay, to stay, to change direction, to work harder, to learn the alphabet, to obey, and to enter. But what do we have before these words? What do we have before? If you see, what we have before is a person. Me, the people, me again, us in this case, the guests, her, his brother, me again, them, his soldiers, and them, right? The, the reporting verb goes in the past form. You can use it in the present, no problems. We have uh, bags over here in the present and also orders in the present or uh, using simple present. But normally we use them in the past form. We need a person right there in the middle and then the infinitive to and the verb. All right, let's continue. Now, 
Uh, reported verse she suggests the man the man insist look these three verbs suggest the man and insist can be used as reported verbs for imperatives however they do not follow the same pattern as above the previous one this 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 is because the structure for using them is as follows suggest the man insist plus that plus someone. So this is how reported speech with these verbs will look. Direct speech. She said, study hard to get your promotion. Reported speech. See, she suggested that, look, she suggested that I study harder to get, excuse me, to get my promotion. To get my promotion, not your promotion, my promotion. So what are we doing here? We are adding, we are adding a subject. We're adding a subject. This is only for these three verbs. Suggest, demand, and insist. Only for these three. Okay? For these three. Yes. Another example, direct speech. He said, take a cab home. What's a cab? A cab is a taxi. Report speech. He insisted that I take, look, that I take a cab home. You cannot say, you can't say, she suggested me to study hard. Or he insisted us to take a cab home. No, it's not the same structure. We have to use the word that, and then we have to use a subject, I, in these cases. All right? Do you have any questions, people? Maybe I don't know you can share those uh, screens in order to practice. I'm sorry? I don't know if you're able to share the that, that presentation to, to practice, you know? Yes, yes, I can share it. I can share it with you. In fact, let me do it right now. Since we're here, I can do it right now with no problems. Hold on. Hope it's possible. There you go. I just shared it. All right. Let's continue. We have, uh, we're going to have some time later on to continue practicing this. But right now, we're going to work on the book because in the book we have uh, some exercises. All right, down here. It says, read the following quotes by entrepreneurs doing business online. Re rewrite them using reported speech. Compare your answers with a classmate. We got seven examples. I am going to give you five minutes. Five. You can use you can use any of the verbs I showed you. This one. So let me bring back the presentation. You can use any of these verbs: advise, urge, ask, remind, request, beg, tell, order, instruct, command, etc. You can use them. But if you, I think it's better to use this one, the polite request uh, list. Advice, urge, ask, remind, request, etc. Those ones. Yes. For example, you can say uh, Mark Zuckerberg advised us or advised me to only hire people who, who I would work for. Something like that, yes. My eye is itchy. Repeat the example, please, teacher. The example? Yes. Yes. Uh, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, excuse me, advised me, advised in the past form, advised me to only hire people who I would work for. If you want, you can remove only with no problems, and you can say, my Mark Zuckerberg 
advised me to advised me to hire people who I would work for. That can be an option. If you want to change the verb, you can use, you can do it, no problem. Guys, are you ready?
All right, I think we're, I think we're, we're ready. All right, uh, let's begin with the sharing. And number one, number one, we have an example, only hire people who you would work for. And this uh, was said by Mark Zuckerberg. All right, uh, who has this one? Who's got it? Share, please, number one. Anyone? Me, teacher, for sure. Thank you, Emerson, yes. Okay, well, Mark Zuckerberg once said that only hire people who would work. Sorry, sorry, I was reading another thing. Mark Zuckerberg once said that only hire people who would work for. Uh, do you Mark want to repeat? Said, yes. Mark Zuckerberg once said that only hire people who will work for. And two. I don't know if it is, it is correct. For two. Oh. Once. That's how it goes. Mark Zuckerberg once said oh. to only hire people who you would work for. It's two instead of that. Exactly. That only applies with the with three verbs. Suggest, insist, and demand. Because we're talking about infinitives. I mean, uh, imperatives. Imperatives. Right? We can use a say that, but in a different situation with report speech. And right now we're reporting sentences or things that do not have a subject. If you see, they, they, they don't have a subject. Concentrate on the long term, no subject. Make user experience uh, your competitive advantage, no subject. None of them have a subject. So they are called imperatives. If you have a subject, yes, you can say Mark Zuckerberg said that he, et cetera, in that case. But since we don't have a subject, we're just reporting an imperative. It's different. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Very good. The second one, concentrate on the long term. This was said by Larry, Larry Page. Anyone who has it? Anyone? Teacher, uh, I don't know if it's okay. Larry Page ordered me to concentrate on the long term. Yes. Larry Page ordered me to concentrate on the long term. Thank you for sharing. That's how it is. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three, anyone make user experience your competitive advantage. Aaron Levi, Levi, I don't know. I don't know. Anyone? I want to try. Okay, thank you. Okay, Aaron Lip suggests me may you start experience your competitive advantage. Repeat it, please. Aaron Lip suggests me. Uh... Yes, suggested. Suggest me. That? No, me, me in this case. Uh -huh. Suggest me and may you share your competitive advantage.
I don't know it's okay. No. No. Look. Or you can ask say you can say she suggested me to study hard. Suggest the man and insist go with the, with this combination. Plus that plus someone. Example, she suggested that. I study hard to get your promotion. And she, I mean, he insisted that I take a cab home. So we got an example over here and you said, so just, oh, I really erased everything. And I erased the, the whole thing. All right, it's okay. So, um, Suggested that I make user experience my, this is talking about my my competitive advantage. Just like that. That's how it should go. Yes. All right. Yes. Remember, suggest, okay. insist, and demand. Don't go with the object pronoun. They you you cannot say suggested me, commanded me. Oh, sorry, demanded me and insisted me. That is demanded that, suggested that, and insisted that. All right. Okay. In this case, it will be. Uh, the subject after that. Please, yes, yes, exactly. The subject goes right after the word that. Suggested so that you can say are you we depending on on the person. Yes. Uh, okay, and and then the 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 sentence uh, become become. To my own. Pretty much, pretty uh, much. Yes. That, that's me because I can see the the that you you write my uh, mm -hmm. in uh, after experience uh, your. Yes. Yes. Because. Because uh, it says make user experience your your competitive advantage. Then I change it to I. Just suggested that I, right? This person Aaron suggested that I make user experience my competitive advantage. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Thank yes. you. All right. Thank you, Eric. Number four, learn a lot really fast from doing things wrong. Drew Huston. Anyone? With number four? Me, teacher. Hey, Fabricio, thank you. Go ahead. Drew, okay. Drew Houston instructed me to learn a lot really fast from doing things wrong. Repeat it, please. Drew Houston instructed me to learn a lot really fast from doing things wrong. There you go, yes. Drew Hassan instructed me to learn a lot really fast from doing things wrong. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. Thank you for sharing. It is correct, it is correct. Again, you can use whatever reporting verb you want. Instructed me, urged me, asked me, advised me, instructed me, etc. All right? Number five, focus on the customer, not the product. Anyone, help me out with this one in number five.
Can I, teacher? Yes, of course. Okay, uh, Tony, he, he, no sé cómo se dice. I don't know how, how <laughs> can I say it? Tony? I, I don't know. Suggested? Okay, let me see. Go, 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 go ahead. Suggested me to be focused on the customer, not the product. Uh -huh. Suggested? Suggested me to be focused. Mm -hmm. On the customer, not the product. Take a look at number three. Diego. Again, if you're using the verb suggest and cest, and demand, the structure is going to be a little different. We're not going to use me. We cannot say that. That's grammatically incorrect. So that's why we say suggested that I, I focus on the customer, not the product. Just like that. Just like that. Yes. Right? That's how okay, it should go. You. That's how it should go. The last one, get used to rejection. The last one. Anyone get used to rejection, Jack Ma? New teacher again. Okay, thank you. Jack Ma told me to get used to re rejection. There you go. I'll need to get used to rejection. Yes. Jagma told me to get used to reject rejection. Yes. We got it. We got it. Okay. We got them all. Remember, you have to be very careful with the verb suggest, with the verb demand, and the verb insist when you are reporting a sentence. Okay. Very good. From these people I have here, I just know two of them well three i just know i know uh, jack ma i know larry page and i know mark zuckerberg i don't know aaron i don't know drew and i don't know tony do you guys know them no i don't know i don't know who aaron is i don't know who drew is and tony it's mark zuckerberg the creator of facebook Larry Page is the creator of Google and Jack Ma, the creator of Alibaba. And the other people, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Yes. All right. Now, we're going to come up with our own examples. We have 10 minutes. So let's go back to the presentation. Now, I want you guys to use, I want you guys to use one of the verbs from here to provide your own example. Any verb from here. Any verb from here, you gotta follow the structure. For example, yes, my boss told me to buy paper. <laughs> my boss told me to buy paper. That's my, my example, okay? Guys, come up with your examples. Use whatever verb you want from here and just provide your own example, yes. Go, go. <laughs> Tell me, tell me. Nice. Hello, hello. Go, go. Um, having a baby demands a lot of energy and time. No, you have to report. Report. Oh, oh. You are reporting, reporting what, what a person said, what your boss told you, what uh, your mother told you, what she advised you or asked you or reminded you of. 
uh, well, my teacher. Mm, no, I certainly tell the same. No, I was I, I was about to say my teacher instructs me to practice more. My teacher instructs me. Instructs me to practice more English. To practice more English. Okay. Yes, yes, we got it. We got it. People, continue, people. My dad told me to never give up in life. Okay. My 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 father told me. My dad or my father told me to never give up in life. Okay, to never give up in life. Perfect example. Thank you. Another one. Uh, my parents told me believe in yourself. Mm. Believe in myself. In this. To my believe. parents. Yeah, of course. My parents told me to believe in myself. Uh -huh. My parents told me to believe in myself. Yes. Right, right. Excellent. Another one, another one. Uh, okay, my mother advised me mm -hmm. to be correct with the money. To be correct with the money. Or with it's money. better suggest, yes, suggest that I that I have to be good with the money. Correct. Okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. Thank you. People, let's continue. We have uh, five minutes. Practice, practice. Me, teacher. Okay, go my ahead, mother, Jackie. My mother ordered me to come back home before 7 p.m. Okay. Well, all right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good example. Good example. Yes. Your mom is Based in real life. <laughs> oh, I, it's, it's, it's what you have to say. All right. That's good. That's good. Awesome. What else? What else? More examples? The customer demands me to give a good a good attention for him. The customer demands me to to give a better customer a customer service to him. Okay, remember, remember. Suggest, demand, and insist are different. No. Okay. The customer demands that I try again, Emerson. Fix it. The customer demands to pay to give him more uh, a good customer service. No, no, no. Demands that I give him. Oh, that I give him. Yes. The customer demands that I give him a good service. That's how it is. Okay. It's kind of complicated with suggest, demand, and insist. You have to practice these verbs. Yes. It's the grammar. The grammar is that changes. You can say advise me, urge me, ask, ask me, remind me, uh, request me, beg me, suggest me, no, tell me, order me, instruct me, command me, for, forbid me, demand me, no, insist, insist me, no. Suggest that I, demand that I, and insist that I. That's how it goes, grammatically speaking. Yes. Well, look, it is here. Oops. Suggested that I, and you cannot say uh, she suggested me to study or insisted us to take. That's not possible. All right. More examples, more examples. My boss instructed me to finish the project for tomorrow. Repeat it. 
my boss instructed me to finish the project for tomorrow. All right, all right. Okay. What else? More examples? No, no more. Okay, people, I just want to ask you and say, ask you to work. See, ask you. I just want to ask you to work on a platform. You have to do it today because I'm going to be updating the ones that have not finished yet. You got to do it, please. You got to work on it. Remember, at least 80, 80 percent. If you get more, perfect. If you get less, no, that's not enough. You got to get it up to 80 percent at least. Let me update the attendance and then we will be, we will be free to go. Diego Josue Benitez. Present teacher. Thank you. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez. Present teacher. Thanks. Emerson Alexander Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you. Eric Enrique Reyes. Present. Elisa was not here. Elisa was not here today. Carla Ivania Anaya. Katia Present Maria teacher. Gonzalez. Thank you, thank you, Carla. Present teacher. Luis Fabricio Tobar. I'm here, teacher. Thanks. Luis Javier Castillo. Magdiel Esau Garcia. Present. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Uh, Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. And Mauricio Edgardo Soriano. I'm here. Okay. Uh, who did I tell to stay today? I forgot. Me, teacher. Who? <laughs> me, teacher. You're going to help me out with, uh, with my homeworks. All right, all right. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, people, thank you for joining today's session. It has been a pleasure. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, yes, be safe, take care, and have a good night. All right, bye bye. See you tomorrow. Good night, good night, everyone. Bye, teacher. See you, teacher. Thanks. Fabricio, let's see what's going on with the with the platform. Uh, which ones do you have issues with? Which exercise? Do you remember? I don't know if I can share my, my screen with uh, you. Let me, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was doing it. All right, let me just stop sharing. All right, let me see if I see. Okay. There you go.
Here it is. In this section, I had troubles. Uh, all my answers tell me uh, uh, are wrong. Uh, let's see what's going on. Click on it. Uh, big online stores said. Uh -huh. That's correct. That stores said that trusted uh, brands have a strong reputation. Can you please move the, 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 the mouse? No, 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 no. El, 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 el. ¿Cómo se llama esa? Ah, ella, ya llegó. Mouse pad. Yes. Go to the end. Has a strong reputation. At the period. Sorry? The period. At the end, at the end, the period. In the chat? Let's see. <laughs> period. Uh -huh. The period. Es el punto. Where? At the end, at the end. At the end. Uh -huh. That's the problem. Maybe. Try. Send it. Send it. All right, let's go back. I Each try. Um, at the beginning, I use the uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, quotation in this case. Using or, uh, or no 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 no. Be gone like just to re remove that. Don't click mas. I don't espacio. I don't espacio. Sorry. Okay. Trust the brands. See. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes. I mean that that is correct. Is correct. But uh, the platform the platform only takes very specific answers. Uh -huh. Let's continue okay. with the other ones. It's okay. Say the paper. Don't forget the period. At the end. Yes, at the end. Uh, oh, let's see, let's see what's that with this one. A blank mobile phones networks were more secure than public wide. Okay. Okay. Why well, it is correct. Go to the beginning. Regress up in principio. Agregale that. <laughs> that, that. Huh. Right. Oh. 
blogger said that what otra vez? Mobile forms on Siga, Siga. Oh, oh phones. phones. Yes, yes. <laughs> there you go. A friend said offers that are no, no, está bien. that. Uh, oh, first, uh, I don't know, notice that. Yes. Pongale en pasado, word. Friend said, oh, first, that are where? Uh -huh. Too good to be true. Might stand. I'm going to supreme that. That está bien. Ese that está bien. También otra vez a R. Change it, back, change it back to R. R. Well, sir, of course, that are too good to be true. Might scam. Might Let's be. Try again. B. Oh, yes. Might be. Ah, there you go, there you go. Yes. Ah, this platform is, is, is difficult sometimes. <laughs> you have to yes. be very specific with the answer. Um I was worried about that. I don't know. I, I didn't know what what was happening. Yes, I understand, I understand. All right. Yes. The rest of the homeworks I did it. I can, you can see. see. That. Uh, and this one, I I don't know. Uh, in a class, we talk about this. Uh, why uh, being a person, good or bad, uh, can can be an advantage or a disadvantage. Yeah, it's case, an I advantage. It's an advantage for everyone. But you know, bad people, you know, uh, they they do illegal things, so, so that's why they take it as in as a disadvantage. So. Yes, that's why. That's why. Let's check what's going on with the other ones. You got him, you got him. Excellent. <clears throat> that's the one we're dealing with. All right, excellent. That is for today, I think. Uh huh. That's correct. Okay. Right. I'll do this tonight. Yes. Right now. Yes, of course. Yeah. Right now, yeah, you can do. It. If you have questions, okay. let me know. I'm I'm going to be available on WhatsApp. You can send me a message directly or on the group. No problem. Okay, teacher. Perfect. Thank you very much. No, thank you for staying. Thank you, Mauricio. Yes. All right, I will see you tomorrow then. Take care, have a good night, and sleep well. See you tomorrow, teacher. Take care of yourself. Thank you, thank you.